Thanks for joining me. My name is Rich Maxwell. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose your bilge pump float switch using a test light and a meter. These are going to be a few of your tools that you're going to need. You need a good voltmeter. You need a 12 volt test light, preferably with a regular type of bulb. I don't like to use the LED bulbs and I'll explain why in my video. You might need some good test leads. If you decide to reinstall it with using some connectors, use some waterproof connectors. You're gonna need some crimping tools, some sideline cutters. And in my case, I like to use a soldering gun with solder. And of course, I'm gonna need a torch to melt down my heat shrink and a good light and a fellow screwdriver to remove and replace the actual load switch itself. So this is my bilge pump system in my boat. And the first thing I wanna do is manually check the, the functionality of my float switch. Now on the back of the float switch, there's a lever. And what I wanna do, I wanna hit the lever and basically I'm picking up the float switch and actually activating the micro switch inside the unit. And as you can hear, there's no bilge pump that's turning on. So the first thing I want to do, I want to check and make sure that there's power to the system. All right. So the second thing I'm going to test is making sure that the system or the boat actually has power supplying my float switch. So the first thing I want to do, I want to set my meter to DC volts. So make sure your meter has DC volts selected. I'm going to take both leads. I'm going to take the red to the positive and the black to the negative and then we're going to go back and look at our meter and you see that right now I have 12.31 volts hopefully you can see that so I know I have good voltage now that's using the meter now the second thing we are going to now use the test light method so the alligator clip side will go to the negative and then we're going to take the pointy end and we're going to go to my battery positive the bulb lights up we know we have voltage okay the next thing we're going to check out since we have voltage we're going to check out the fuse or the breaker each boat is different uh, some can be located on the dash such as that or some are located near your hopefully near your battery switch and they're labeled so next thing I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and pop the cap off and I currently have a 10 amp fuse we want to actually make sure that this fuse is good so using my meter I want to go ahead and re remove it now you can look inside and see if it is blown we're going to go to our meter we're going to go ahead and set a continuity if your meter has that if not it's going to be the ohm reading either one i like to use this one because this actually gives me a tone when i put both connectors together that's letting me know that we have continuity so it's connected so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to take my fuse and put one lead on the one side and the other lead on the other side and there's the tone and it's zero on my screen. So that's letting me know that the fuse is good. So that's using the meter. So the other method, here we go again, we're going to use a test light. So again, we have to connect it, one lead to my negative. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the fuse back into the holder. And at the top, you can see that the metals exposed so the circuit should be hot all the time whether the battery switch is on or off so everybody understands that if you notice that the power is on with the battery switch on and when you turn off the battery switch if you lose power then you're incorrectly installed the power side to the battery switch or and or another selector switch somewhere in the boat so to test out this circuit I should be able to go like that and we look at it the bulb is lit that's on one side to make sure that the fuse is good you should be able to go to the other side 
and if it lights that lets you know that the fuse is good now if it doesn't light and you go on there that means the circuit is not complete in between and the fuse is more likely bad so now i'm back in the bilge i have power from my fuse through the fuse i know that side is good so now what I'm looking at is making sure that my voltage is actually supplied to my float switch. Now, in my boat, I located the gray wires, which is two gray wires that go to the float switch. It's to and from. And then I follow it up and I'm actually at a connector here. So I'm gonna actually disconnect the connector. And what I need to do is test and make sure that I have 12 volts to this connector. I'm going to set it to voltage DC again and I want to take the one lead and I'm going to go in here. Now those of you that are used to using test lights do not stab the wire. It is a no-no because as soon as you do that you're now going to expose the wire to the environment and therefore you'll have future issues with the wiring. So Hopefully you can find a connector like this, or worse than comes to worse, find the connection where they actually hook it into the boat and then go ahead and just cut it and then re-splice it back in when you're done. So we want to use one end or the other end. I don't know which side is actually the hot side, but I have to make sure that one side gives me voltage. So the one end goes in there. This other end is going to go to ground. So I have my one lead on the negative on my battery because it reaches and then now I'm just looking at where if I have any voltage. So I have none on that side and I go ahead, put it on this side, now look at my meter. I have 12 and a half volts. So that's letting me know that I have voltage to the circuit. So the next step we got to do is the actual component test. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to test it using a test light. So I have again my test light the connector on the negative side and now I'm going to take us back around and go and test the positive circuit of my float switch. So I'm going to take my test light, go to the connector and see it lights up so it's letting me know that I have 12 volts there so our component check and just to make it a little bit easier so everybody can see I actually grabbed a new one and to explain how the system works is the manual override switch is there I don't know if you've seen it in the beginning so when you lever it up you hear the click so when it goes up it should make a continuity or we should complete the circuit so this is what we call a normally open when it's down. When it goes up, it closes the circuit. So this is where the meter comes into play. So I like to set my meter, again, to the continuity or tone, or you can even put it to the ohms. And I'm going to connect both wires here. And I'm going to, just for demonstration reasons, so everybody understands how this works. And I'm going to go ahead and look at my meter. You can see the OL right now. So when I pick this thing up it should complete the circuit when it goes back down it should turn off so that lets me know that this one is working so we want to check the one that's in the boat in the same fashion so we lift it up if we complete the circuit and you go down and it's off that's letting me know that the float switch is good now if that happens to you in the boat and you're testing out the float switch and you have power and when you lift it up you have continuity and you lift it and you know, drop it down it turns off it's letting you know that that is actually working and the other problem is either from the float switch to the belch pump itself or the belch pump fuse might be blown or the belch pump itself is actually bad and that's just another diagnosis and possibly another um, DIY video that I'll make okay so those of you that are wondering if you don't have a digital voltmeter and all you have is a test light so we already checked and made sure we had power from my connector. So we have power to the float switch. What you have to do, you have to find out which one 
is the power that goes in. And it doesn't matter on this circuit because both wires are the same color. So one has power, it goes through. When the micro switch goes up, it then sends power back to the bilge pump itself. So what you have to do if you're gonna use the test light, you have to keep one wire connected to power. And of course, this lead has to go to ground. And when you have that connected to power, when you lift up, you should have this, your, the tip of the test light on the other lead. So when you go up, if it lights up, that's letting you know that the component is good. If it does not light up, that's letting you know that the power is not going through the unit itself and it should be replaced. Okay, so the next step is my flow switch does not have continuity when I lift up the lever. So it's letting me know that my flow switch is bad. So to replace it, you have a screw in the front and there's a screw in the back. So we're just going to go ahead and unscrew it. Now what's really nice is since I'm replacing it with the exact float switch, I don't have to add any more holes. I don't have to drill anything new. Um, so it should just be a direct fit. The only thing I have to do is but connect or solder back the connections. Now what's nice here on these is the back one is slotted. See here. So you only need to actually loosen up the rear, rear screw. So, but you do have to remove the front one. Okay, so in my boat, I actually have a connector that's that they actually used for the original float switch. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reuse that because I actually like that quick disconnect. It is a waterproof connection and it is in good shape. It's not corroded. So I'm gonna transfer this over to my new one. A couple different ways you can do it that I recommend to solder it and then heat shrink it using the heat shrink and soldering it up with this. It is a sure connection and it's a waterproof connection. Now, my second option would be to use the waterproof butt connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and steal this connector off of this one. I'm gonna go ahead and Got a pretty good amount out. So I'm going to go ahead and strip the wire back. Make sure you strip enough. There. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I strip enough back on the new component. Then I'm going to go ahead and put heat shrink on one side and the other side there. so we have now our waterproof connection and I'm ready to reinstall it into the boat all right so now we're going back in screws we don't want to push the plastic down which can affect the float switch inside the cage here so I like to snug them down this little bit and then we're going to go ahead and plug it in once it's all plugged in, we're going to go ahead and test it. And there we go. Push down the manual override and my pump is now on. So, thanks for joining me. If there's any questions or comments that you'd like to add in there, please feel free to do it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't cover in this video because there's a lot of different scenarios and there's a lot of different circuits uh, for a lot of bilge pumps. So 
I only did it for my boat because this is actually a problem I have with my boat. But if there's any questions, I'll try to answer them best I can. Please, again, like and subscribe. I'm looking at improving my channel. And if I can, I'll put out more videos. Um, so, thanks a lot.